morning. You are at the PHP conference Asia 2016 on the tutorial day on track two. Uh, before we start, let's thank the uh, sponsors. Our whole sponsor, Amazon Web Services, they sponsored the food and the venue for today. And uh, gold sponsor, Pusha. Gold sponsor, Automatic. And silver sponsors, uh, Microsoft, Dynatrace, Alpha Camp. And uh, supporter sponsor, uh, Kusanagi, iCommerce, Zinios. Uh, we are privileged to have uh, Damien today with us. PHP 7 is the latest and greatest version of uh, PHP. And he will talk about how to keep your code conformant with uh, PHP 7 to get all the benefits of the language. Thank you. Okay, I think I'll, I'll grab the screen. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll try again the, the little stats, we, we, uh, the, the little survey we did uh, before. Who's using PHP 5.6? Or less. Everyone, know, okay. So uh, almost everyone, and of the one who are not raising their hand, what's left? PHP seven. 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 Okay. Seven. The second one. Seven one. Seven two. Okay, I'm the only one, right? I'm oh, you're seven two. Yeah. Oh, you compile your own PHP, great. And what else? Who's, who hasn't ra raised their hands? There's a guy over there who's not raising. You think I don't see you? I'm not, I'm not PHP 4. OK. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so good. So five, if you're on 5 and you're planning to move to 7, that's exactly why you should be listening to here to this session. And what is wrong here? That should be all. That was automatic. The, we already have to call the assistants. Anyway. So this is exactly what we're going to do uh, this morning. I'm going to give you the tools and the informations um, to uh, know first. Yeah, that looks good. And to know, right, so 7.1. Um, I'm going to give you the inf uh, all the tools you need to know what is new in PHP 7 and 7.1 and 7.2. We're also going to touch. 7.2. They haven't done much work, but that's going to be useful. Um, and we are going also to see how to deal with the backward incompatibilities, which is usually the thing that is preventing you from moving. Okay, Anything that's going to break your code, you don't want to see that. New features, well, if you're trying to move, then of course you want to use the new features, right? That will happen at the end. But basically, the, the process we're going to follow to find the incompatibilities are going to be the same that the one we want to find the places to apply the new features. So every, uh, between them, after that, from between the incompatibilities and the new features, in between all those weird monsters uh, hiding in the closet one way or another, we'll also try to find and track them down. So this is the, the, this is the work. We're going to follow one synopsis, one, one cycle, one loop all the time. First, learn what we want to look for, because at that point, if you're still in 5, you, you haven't get yourself accustomed to PHP 7, you don't know the monsters you're going, to f you're going to have to fight, right? So we first know what is going to break. Secondly, spot it in the code, because that's going to be also the second thing you have to fight with. You don't know. You have a million lines of code. You have five sorts to find and to, to change. Where are they? Okay, there are tools, there are techniques, there are ways to, to go fast to those places. Finally, and then we can start arguing with each other, what are you going to replace them with? Okay, what kind of new code? Once we're done with one feature, then we do it with the next. So we're going to repeat that all the time, all the time. First part, I, I tell you where to find the information, how to look for it. Then on the second part, we are going to list the features, and that's where you go into play, come into play. I'm going to ask you how you look for the information in the code, and you tell me then also how you want to change that. OK? So that will be the more workshop part of the, of the presentation. <coughs> so who's, who, who doesn't know me yet? Oh. OK, well, I've been already bugging you with the elephant. What else do you want to know? I'm French-Canadian, Canadian-French. I did that yesterday, right? That's a good joke. You got it? 
Yeah, I no one understand that, but what, uh, what else? Um, I do live in, uh, in Netherlands at the moment with a French passport so, and uh, my Chinese license, so it's kind of difficult uh, to follow, but whatever. Um, and I, on a daily basis, work on static analysis, which we're going to cover uh, during the, the session, uh, which is a way to look into the code and, and be able to uh, process millions of lines of code without actually running them. So making some automated code review, if you want. This is exactly the base for, for uh, learning how to do the migration because, among other things, this is uh, what I do on a regular basis. So, first, what's in the next version? Um, where in my code can I find those problems or those features? And then third, how to replace them, right? Um, so where, where can I find things in the, um, in the next version? We need to get documentation. And I don't, I'm not using the word manual, okay? PHP has a manual. This is documentation because we're going to go way further than just the manual. Then, where do I find in the code? How do I find the issues? What are the different tools needed? And finally, fix code, right? So migration to PHP 7.1, uh, also just a few details on the session itself. We're going to cover 7.0, 7.1, and 7.2, or 8. I don't know what name they have because that's the problem at that point. They haven't decided the name. So, We'll maybe doing PHP 7, PHP 8 without knowing it. And we'll be moving from PHP 5.6, as every one of you know, PHP 5.5 is dead. So please don't use it anymore. At least do the migration as soon as possible. Uh, what else? I'm not going to cover any specific framework. If you're using it, that's good for you, but it's just, com well, you have to ask to see with them with the framework you use if it's already moved to PHP 7 or not, okay? Everything here is just bare bone PHP. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, no libraries, no, no framework like that. And I'm going to mention a number of tools. All of them are open source. All of them can be grabbed online, downloaded, and used right after the session. So please feel free. The session, the slides, of course, will be given to uh, my, the chief. And you can download them. We'll probably have no time to uh, cover everything. I have way too many slides and way too many features. Um, so if you have questions, do not wait for the end. Just raise your hand. That's a workshop. We're not a large crowd. Feel free to ask at the, at the moment, okay? I will cover that. Or I will tell you to wait because maybe you're ruining my, my dramatic effects. Um, what else? I think that's good. Everyone's ready. Second brain is ready. Once the first is full, just switch it. And we said no pause, right? Yeah, I'm not, a, and I'm not keen on pauses, and I have lots of things to do. So. If you need, just go away, but come back fast because you're going to miss a lot of things. First, where do we get information? Where do we get information on new PHP 7? The website, well, yeah, of course. We start the website. That's going to be the lowest we can, we can do, right? So that's the lowest we can do. Of course, there is, there is even a migration uh, page, okay? If you look for this migration for 7.1, I'm not sure it's already up. I don't think so. But on 7.1, uh, 7 has been there for a long time. So yeah, go, th go there, go, that's a good start. That's pretty, pretty complete, pretty exhaustive. So that's a good start, okay? It's probably translated also in different languages. Depends what, what you, you're using. So that's also interesting. There's also much better, there are books. Usually people like to write books. So that's probably the same content than the, the one online, but with different examples or with some parts are more inflated than the others. Okay, So that's also an, an interesting. It's also better, better organized, usually. Um, I usually like to refer for PHP 7, just PHP 7.0. There's one written by David Shafik, which is already on the conference. He should be here this morning, so we're going to echo him a lot this morning. But he should be here. He's also the release master for the 7.1. So he's really the guy to know. And that's going to, be going to be also a really good source. Maybe we'll have some questions along the way. Uh, I have one, actually. I have to bug in with that. But um, um, we may have some questions. He's the one who knows everything. So he's on the conference. Take your advantage. Go meet him, ask him, bug him. OK, he's going probably to push some new bugs faster than, than the others. Uh, of course, there are lots of blogs and articles which are usually completely inexhaustive, but they may have some focus on things that you don't see anywhere else. So keep an eye on those because they are interesting. But most of the time, they will be reduced to five, eight, ten different features or incompatibilities. 
So yeah, that's interesting. That's a short read, but it's not exhaustive. Just the important thing. So that's the li that's the age, right? For you, you're on five six. That's your age. Can we go further? Can we go even closer to the development phase? Yeah, we have lots of informations. First, you can go on the, the, the GitHub source. Inside the source, please don't read it. This is C code. This is <coughs> difficult to read at best. But there is an upgrading fair file, which is the one that co collects all the information that will be the base for the migration to PHP 7.0. So the documentation <coughs> online is based on the upgrading file. So on, for PHP 7.1, for example, you can go there and get it. Okay. Even worse, even more detailed, there is another one that I use all the time, which is news. There is another file which is called news. And you go on the GitHub, every time there is a commit on the source, every time they fix a bug, every time they do a change, it's referenced here. It's more log, OK? If, if I'm complaining that the migration is not organized necessarily in you know, interesting chapters, this is really log. Everything they do, it's one after each other. So it could be something as big as uh, remove uh, uh, an extension and next a, a small bug fix, okay? Or even something that I submitted, like a, a change of phrasing in an error message. You know, really simple. But you get them here. So if you're looking for a specific bug, something that you've, you're craving or you're, you're waiting to be fixed, that will be here. Even worse. Even worse and bleeding even more, the RFC website. Who know the RFC website? One. Yeah, well, two? Two and a half? One and a half, maybe. RFC is the request for comments. So anytime there's a new feature that will be built up into PHP 7, well, or 8, or whatever the new versions, it will be first presented, documented, exemplified, and put there for vote. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. And finally, the bugs, bugs itself. Uh, there's the list of bugs, bugs.php.net. If you reference a bug there, you can follow, see if it's uh, impacting your code or not. So the RFC is interesting. You can see it this way. Um, this is Cruntif of 7.1. This is the list of things that have been implemented. So you can see different names that are interesting. Um, what do you know already about PHP 7.1 that has been done? What's famous? Constant uh, class constant visibility? Where is it? It's not there because it's actually too low. It's even there are so many things that it's actually hidden from uh, from there. Um, updates and modernization of list that's there. Oh yeah, but it doesn't show. No, it's too weak. Uh, new, new, uh, we're going to see new, new level type. Um, what that? And this exception, too few argument exception, fatal error, things like that. This is everything that has been implemented in terms of features, and that will now be uh, versed into the, the documentation uh, itself. So there is the 7.1 list. There is another list which I find amusing, which is things that people have voted for but not yet done. OK, so that's another list of things, especially daylight saving time transition. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a lot of work for Derek. Um, neural colors, a goal operator, things like that. Even after that, there is in draft. So those are being talked about, but not yet voted. Um, interesting things, consistent callables, um, automatic CSERF protection. That sounds nice. That's something we can, we can you know, keep an eye on, because hopefully it's going to do something. Uh, it was created in May. Probably it's a little early for us to have any implementation, but that's interesting. There's some work on that. Uh, arrow functions, immutable classes and properties. And after that, you even have under discussion. Uh, that's completely you know, science fiction. But you can learn about that. And I will finish with this. This is the beginning of PHP 7.2. This is the news website, the news file I mentioned, OK? So you see it's um, uh, broken down by extension in core. And this is exif, and there are already a few of them. It's not a long if you want to get a look, uh, take a look at the moment. It's pretty short because on the master, it's currently for 7.2. So if you want to check 7.1, you have to switch the branch and, and have a much longer file. But everything that is uh, done is already there. You will even know who is working. So here, Kelly is apparently working a lot. And that's the only one. 
<laughs> that's the only one. But anyway, sometimes, uh, some, sometimes some of them uh, are more or less uh, awake. And for example, we're going to see removed SQL safe mode directive. So we already know something that's going to be up in uh, PHP 7. Who's using this safe mode? Yeah, who mentioned you? You said you don't use PHP 3, right? OK, good. Anyway, so here is all the information. Here is the, uh, this is the information. This is where you, you first take a look, depending on how much time you want to spend on searching for this these features or backward incompatibilities you want to look for in your code. Then you, you use the first elements I gave you, and then you can go down and down and down. Okay? So at that point, you have, you have a documentation. You have a number of features you want to look for. And we now have to review the code to look for them, to look for those inside, right? Um, so traditionally, PHP has two, side, two uh, phases, right? The first one is reading the, the code itself and turning that into opcode. The second phase is starting from this opcode and doing the execution. For the, for the sake of the, the analysis we're doing, for the migration itself, I actually broken that into three parts, OK? The first one is linting, which is checking the syntax, and then checking the definitions, OK? And the third part is execution. So it still overlap with the previous model, but there are two phases here which are very different. And I'm going to explain it to you with the, um, the example right after there. Here. Here, this is a very simple code. The first part of PHP is checking for ex uh, syntax. Okay, can anyone spot a syntax problem in this code? A syntax problem. Same variable name repeated. Yes, same variable name. Is that a problem in PHP five? Is this a problem in PHP 5? No, it's a feature. You can run that. That works. You can give the same name to 100 different arguments, and that works. We'll see later what, what it does. But yes, that's a syntax problem that appearing in PHP 7, because PHP 7 do not allow that anymore. So it is going to be really unhappy. Now, you may think it's really weird to have people I mean, developers who actually give twice the same, or even three times the same name to an argument, right? Uh, given the last survey I did over uh, 1,400 different open source projects, 2% of them were using this feature. Though so you're right. I mean, we are not, what are we like 30, or 30 of us? So it means like no one is using that at the moment, OK? But maybe if we were like 50 of us, that would be someone who'd use that. OK? so. Be careful. That happens sometimes to the best of us. Um, so that's a syntax problem. A definition problem. What kind of definition is missing in this code? There's a definition missing. I, I don't want you to answer now that you've said something. Hmm? Go ahead. Give it a try. Give it a try. Give it a try. I won't, I won't make fun of you. Sorry? Yeah, OK, 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 yeah, I, you're right. But it's not a definition problem. This is shitty code. I agree with you. <laughs> it doesn't do anything useful. I agree with you. Uh, but it's not a syntax problem. It's not a definition problem. There's a definition ma missing here. Type int? Type int. No, no. I mean, this is a feature of PHP 7, right? So I'm not going to, to show you that. There's something missing. What's the split? Who knows what the hell is a split function? Explode. Hmm? That, that's explode. In PHP 7, that does not exist anymore. Whoosh. Gone. So that's a definition problem. That doesn't look like so, but this is a definition. This function does not exist anymore. We, know, we have to know that. But if we lint it, if we pass PHP minus L, as we're going to show, that does not exist. It will say, oh, yeah, it looks good. Why? It's not in the native, it's not a native function anymore, but PHP will say, okay, I'm not going to yell at any missing definition when I lint because maybe someone included the definition somewhere. So I look at that, syntactically, all the words are, are, are doing something. Split is the name of a function. I don't know about it yet, but I'm not going to yell. 
right? Otherwise, when you include a function that's actually standing in, um, I mean, include a class that's extending something else, then you have to include everything at the same time. Okay, that's right for execution, not for definition. Finally, something that will break at execution time would be something you should cover with unit tests. In this side of the world, we all of course know that family name should go first and then last name. While, of course, probably some Westerners decided to write that code and they have switched that, right? Ah! I, I, I've been used to that, I mean, whatever. So that's, that's execution. Execution, we cover that with unit tests. Syntax, we're going to cover that, cover that with linting. And in between, we're going to cover that with code review. There's no other way. OK? So let's start initially. Here are the different tools we're going to use for migration. And they will cover those three phases. Well, unit tests, we're not going to dwell on that because it's beyond our, our scope to deal with that and do PHP unique on your own side. Um, but the first tool I would suggest is your own experience. Okay, usually you know the code itself, right? Come on. Oh, it's time, it's time. If you want to go to, to board in, that's good. Yeah, names and sets. So if you know the codes, well, use this, okay? This is going to be the fastest way for you to go inside the code and find something to fix or not, at least to check it. We are not going to be able to cover everything at all. Even with all the information I'm going to give you, you're going to end up with a few monsters you forget, OK? And knowing something just by memory, you're going to miss a lot. So this is not exhaustive. This is probably just what you think about the code at the moment, and you're forgetting huge amounts of code somewhere else. So you know that you're going to miss. But you can still be able to spot and zero on a few top problems very fast. For example, on 7.1, you cannot give a name of a class that is void. Who has a class whose name void in his code? I had one. I knew about it. Okay, So the fix was long and difficult. But I knew about it. And even before linting, I knew that every time, uh, I, as soon as I've seen the feature showing up, I knew I would have something to, to fix. And that didn't miss. Okay, So use your experience to check, to do the first in initial checks. It's faster, and you don't even have to load the code to know about it. But do not rely on it 100%. Rely on it on 100%. We're going to use other things, linting, searching, and the logs. The logs is also like unit tests. For, for at execution time, we can, we can capture a number of information. That would be interesting. And static analysis. So linting, for those of you who are not used, Linting is basically PHP minus L. Who's using that? Who's familiar with PHP minus L? One, two, two, three. That's who? That's command line. You go command line, PHP minus L, and you give one name of a file. And it will tell you if it compiles or not. Just linting. It will li load the code, check if everything is fine, and then it will say, OK, no, errors, no syntax error found. Simple like that. If you have more than one file in your application, please, <laughs> hopefully, uh, then you need uh, something that's a little you know, uh, more expensive that will you know, look in the uh, hierarchy and find all the files. Uh, Composer has one. You can do your own. You can you know, have a list of things. Do, do your way. But pitch linting is going to be uh, working this way. So uh, wh why is it interesting? One thing you have to know about PHP ever since PHP 5 is that the number of error messages, messages inside PHP itself keeps on growing and growing every time. Okay? So PHP 5, you can see, basically, we had less than 300 different uh, error messages. And at the current version, we have 2,000 of them. So they, there's a tremendous growth. And if you just take the distinct numbers, then it's always growing up and always growing up. So it means that PHP is doing more and more check, checks on your code. At running, at linting time, any moment, is doing more checks on your code to make sure that it's going to run fine later. Okay, So that's an interesting thing to do. And that's why linting is more and more interesting. Here is, I don't exactly remember the, the application I was checking. But here is, here is um, uh, um, how is that? A synopsis, no, not a synopsis, a summary of an application that I, for which I checked all the different versions. So 
Here you have the version. So the code was checked from 5.2 to 7.1. I didn't try 7.2, but 7.1 and 7.2 will get the same results at that point. And you have the number of files, sorry, the list of files that failed and the kind of errors. Now, this is just a summary, so we don't have the exact breakdown of which file failed with which error. But we have the idea of uh, what's wrong. What can we think about that? This looks like code that actually has some backward incompatibilities, right? It means that probably they were working on 5.4, maybe 5.6, and they checked the linting, and then they decided that they would not provide any more uh, backward compatibilities for 5.3 and 5.2. Can we guess why from there? Do you know what's happened to the, the backward compatibility here? What is the main feature that appeared between 5.4 and 5.3? Yeah, short syntax array. And we can guess that from the syntax error here, an expected bracket. So at some point, the PHP say, OK, I try, I try and trying to understand what, why is this bracket there. And in 5.4, it's OK. But in 5.3, it's gone. I cannot support that. So it's probably at some point they decided to start using the array short syntax. <laughs> you, I, you, you tell me where, where I can stand, but I'm moving a lot. I'm sorry. Ideally, you should be standing next to the screen. No, no I, move, I move back a lot. The so reason is like it may hide the screen for people sitting Oh, there. also. Do you, see, do you see everything, or am I masking anything? OK. Anyway, so here you can see uh, on 5.2, it's probably too much. I mean, uh, PHP doesn't even understand at all, and it's breaking a lot earlier. 5.3 is a little better. At least we understand why it's breaking. And then after that, it's all, all OK. So we have an application that's obviously an open source project, because I, I got mostly, uh, most of them as examples. And we have comp uh, forward compatibility from 5.4 to 7.1. Everything has been checked. OK? Another situation we can have, once you check only the PHP linting, is things like that code focused only on the current version. So maybe you end up with this situation for your co uh, personal code at that moment. I mean, professional code in general. Uh, you can see here, we still again find the error with the short error syntax. So this is not possible. We can use 5.5.5.6, so probably the version that people are working on at that moment. And then later, we already see problems with 7 and 7.1. Okay, So we, had, we have some kind of a, of a slope, right? Problems before, problem after. But on this just specific version, all is fine. OK? So this means that they are not prepared to move to PHP 7. It's OK. At least we know. Another situation we have with linting, things like that. <laughs> this one is especially funny, because at some point, for some reason, PHP 5.4 is not reporting the problem. Obviously, there is something that is not working at all. OK, so it's PHP 7 code, and PHP 5.4 is not reporting it. So sadly enough, PHP linting is not going to be very consistent across the versions. That's all you have to be careful of. The last one I didn't show is sometimes you have the same error ranging from 5.2 to 7.1. When does that happen? the same error on the same file at the same line for every version. This is someone who committed some incompatible file. He didn't check the compilation. OK? Sadly enough, again, that happens. That means that no one has, that this repository has no systematic checking of compilation. As you can see, it's by PHP minus L, so it's very short. It's very easy to automate. Be ruthless with that. It's it often that, on, especially on, on uh, professional code, there is no check. So some of the file who hasn't been touched for years is still there in the, the repository. It's degrading because it's not compatible with a version. But since no one's using it, well, it's still there. Remove it or compile it. But I don't know. But do something. Um, so a few examples. So we already talked about this one. Um, in PHP 5.5. What does that do? What does that print? Anyone guess? Who thinks it prints X? Who thinks it prints Y? Everyone thinks it prints Z? 
Raise hands, please. Okay, so uh, we have a few people who are not really. What do you think it's, it's, uh, it's going to show? X, Y, Z on PHP 5.5? Okay, it's going to be Z, right? PHP is just going to assign the same values over and over to the same, well, the different values to the same variable. So it's going to say, okay, I have three arguments. The first one is X, I put it in A, good. The second one is Y, it's going to put to another variable called A, and it just overwrites. The last one is Z. And then you print it, it goes. PHP 7, not possible anymore. You're going to get a fatal error that has been upgraded. Another one that has been upgraded is this one. Those are really classic ones. What is the problem here? Before I actually uh, run a, p a linting on this one. Multiple defaults. Yeah, you're talking too much, right? That's why it's in front. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can talk also, right? You're in front now. <laughs> OK, so there are two different defaults. In PHP 5, this is OK. That works. The first one will be used, the second one will always be ignored. Again, about 5% of open source projects have several defaults by switch. That happens. I mean, when you have a long list of them, that's very fast that at some point the default has been put somewhere in between, and there's another one at the end, and that's it. It's forgotten. OK? So now it's, it's checked by PHP, so that's nice, right? Um, do you think we can have the same for cases? If we have several cases that have the same value, then maybe PHP can yell and tell us that we, we have doubles, and one of them is useless? No. He has no solution for that. Why, what is the problem with the case? Sorry? Human problem. E? It's a human problem. It's a human problem. Well, PHP could help, I think. OK, but the problem here is all the cases here are all the same. And except the last one, which is pretty obviously uh, the execution problem, I mean, depends on the, the actual value of y, then all of them has to be executed. PHP has to, act to do the linting, check the values, and then run it. 0 plus 1, it has to be running, it has to execute it later. So it will only know the exact value for which it's going to compare the x. It will know that at execution time. And it doesn't want to solve that at linting time. So all of them, even though they are all the same, it will only do the comparison at execution time way too late. So either, either we help PHP by trying to understand if all those values can be solved earlier and, and mention that all of them are identical, or we wait for execution and then that will be too late. Okay? But case is not going to be, a, to be a pro a solved here. On the previous example, there was a case below the default. Is yeah. Yes. And PHP doesn't care about that, about, about the order itself. The cases will be, um, it's not executed like in C, where once you go the default, it's over. OK, it will, it will actually check all the cases. And once all the cases have been uh, checked, then it will, it will stop. I think the cases itself are in the order. So if there is like two case one, for example, or two case gif, that happens, then it will do the first one and not the second one. OK. But otherwise, break wherever it is, it's, it's really the last one. At least PHP is clever for that. OK, so this one probably will need something a little more uh, clever. Um, other things that we can detect easily with PHP uh, linting, deprecated features. OK, and that will yell at you a lot. I think we have already talked about that this morning with who? I've already talked about that. This is the most classic one. If you're using an external open source library, and you've been using that since PHP 4 or early PHP 5, you probably end up with still this kind of syntax, and PHP will be unhappy with that. OK? So as you know, uh, we've been using underscore underscore construct since PHP 5, and not the name of the class as the constructor, right? And now in PHP 7, that's going to be deprecated co totally. So PHP is not going to look for the, the name of the class as the method first. It, there are still a, a number of situations where it's being used as a fallback. So it's still compatible with the older code. But it's really high time for you to clean that. Okay? PHP linting is going to give you that very fast. Um, 
I also like to remember that most of the time, as I say, PHP has more and more error messages. So you get more and more interesting uh, feedback on your PHP code when you, when you lint it. There are also situations where an old message has been downgraded to a fatal error. That's exactly the case of this one. Okay? So if running your PHP 5 code through PHP 7 helps you get it cleaner, this is just going to be a, 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 a fatal error. So in 5.6, you have this nice message. And in 5.7, you just get a syntax error. I mean, in 7, PHP 7, you get this in syntax error. Okay? Um, this one has been a warning. So depending on your error level, you're probably not aware of it. Okay? When you go to PHP 7, that's going to be directly an error. Again, that's a very common mistake. OK? <coughs> Finally, my, re my, my recommendation for that, when you do the linting, or if you want to organize your linting, maybe for migration or in general, do the linting first by middle version. There is no real need to do to minor version, OK? There is like 38 PHP 5.5. There's 25 PHP 5.6. One of them is sufficient. There is no need to lint by every middle version. It may happen once in a while that you get, yeah, there is some uh, regression that has been introduced. That's really rare enough that you don't want to you know, lint a thousand files with another thousand PHP versions. Okay? Middle version is completely sufficient. Use it, of course, on your current version. Use it on every subsequent version. So if we think we are on 5.6, try 7, 7.1, 7 7.2. They have different meanings. Okay? 7.2 is mostly the master version, the current version, whatever it means. Okay, so compile it on your, on your own or download it somewhere and give it a try. Of course, you will know about things. You don't have to fix them right away, right? Depend, depends on how fast you want to move. But at least you'll know about that. And maybe the newer version are going to give you some interesting advice on how to make your current code better. Okay? Um, as we mentioned, removing all those functions with several times the same argument, that, that applies to PHP 5 and 7. Okay? You just know it in 7. But back, backport it in, in five, and maybe you're going to understand some. Well, you're going to fix bugs without knowing them. Okay. Um, try also to be, to to back uh, to check on older versions. Sometimes the message are a little better. That's very low level. But uh, also, if you have uh, uh, open source project or you have published the code, then you have you have to make sure that it's also uh, interesting before. Or if you want to fall back. Okay. Imagine the situation. You prepare your code in PHP 5. You start moving to 7. But if you have a major problem, you want to be back to <coughs> PHP 5, right? So then keep making sure that the comp code is compilable. Then it could run. And later, when you're completely moved, then you can drop it. 5.3, 5.2 is probably really overkill. 5.4 and 5.5, well, they're dead. But if you really need it, then maybe support it. And last one I will mention is be really ruthless with files that are completely incompatible across different versions. As I mentioned earlier, there are sometimes code that is com uh, committed to the repository that stays there but is not used because, of course, it doesn't compile, but it stays there. Just be ruthless. Remove those. Okay? Fix it or remove, but do something. <coughs> Don't leave code that is not compilable in your current version on, on your repository. Good with that? Easy part? Good. That's already a lot of information automated. That's very easy to, to grab. Next, so we said syntax, definition, execution, lint. That's what we did. Test, we won't cover. And now we have to start with code review. Do we really want to review a million line of code? No. We need tools. So we're going to use static analysis. The rudimentary, the prehistoric version of re uh, static anal analysis is going to be grep. OK, let's move that so we, we, we're fast enough. The, the, the old version is grep, or if you want any search facility. Anything that can allow you to search for a keyword inside the code is going to be uh, good for it. OK, so your ID is good for that. Um, any tool you want is, is interesting. Usually, it's really high speed. And if you can search by keyword, that's going to be the fastest you get. Right? So start with that. It's always available. 
Um, the convenient is usually doesn't really rely on PHP semantics, so you may get a lot of things that are not interesting. And it's also difficult at some point when you have, uh, yeah, when you have lots of false positive, that's, that's kind of boring. Here is for an example, if we want to check split. Remember, split is a function that does no main, any more meaning. So I passed a grep on uh, phpMyAdmin, which is a fairly large code base. And I got 1,300 reports. The first interesting thing is the three ones. Well, I made a small selection. I don't want you to read all of them, right? The first selection is that uh, we get split in JavaScript code. We get sp split also into a PO. You know, so you know this for translation. Uh, the only thing I don't understand is that's supposed to be Chinese. Although I do read that as English, but maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Um, and there's also Python code. I, why the hell does pitch me my, my, my admin includes Python code? I don't know. I should ask Mark, I guess. But at least I, I got all those you know, dust that I have to sort and remove first. Secondly, when I look into PHP code itself, I got a number of other problems. I run, with, I run into the perec split, which is an other PHP native function, which is completely valid and stays in PHP 7. Um, there is functions that PHP admin itself created that are bearing the split name, and there are comments. Because actually, they were using, PHP, um, uh, they were using split, but they moved everything to explode. And now they're PHP 7 free. I mean, there's PHP, uh, they're, they're split free. So in the, in the end, I got a lot of feature, I mean, lots of uh, fluff and, and nothing interesting. Well, they also have done the job before. So that gives you an idea of things that a search is going to find and that you don't really want to find. So we move to PHP static analysis. And PHP static analysis, static analysis is when you review the code or test it without executing it. So that's basically the, the old cousin or remote cousin from uh, unit test. Unit test is black box. Here is the situation initially. Here is what I expect. And if I run whatever it happens, whatever hap happens in there, I expect the results to be fitting. Right? Here, we're going to review that just like you and I are going to be able to read the code. Okay? So we have the code itself. We try to understand what it does, where the data is going, what is the control flow, what is, what is the big scheme, how it's organized, but we don't run it. Okay? That's going to give us a lot more uh, abstraction. We can, we can solve problems that unit testing will actually have to build. That's, that's a good thing. But also, we have to do um, a lot of thinking when we review it. How does static analysis start, uh, works? It usually starts with the code itself. So it just gathers the whole code base. Analysis that based on the tokenizer. Who knows about the tokenizer extension? <laughs> you don't speak much, but you raise your head a lot, right? <laughs> so tokenizer, who's using the tokenizer here? One, two, three, that's all. Who's using PHP? <laughs> well, OK, you have been using the tokenizer. OK, tokenizer is the first part of the engine that reads your code and then turns that into opcode. Or it can do that in a huge array. OK, I've got arrays of a million of tokens. But we just get a, it's actually on an extension that's by default. You just have to uh, um, enable it in your PHP code, in your PHP uh, execu execu and, uh, executable. And from there, you, can add, you have two extra functions. One is token get name and token get all. Token get all, you give it a huge string piece of code. It will just break that into lots of things. You will get all the white spaces. So everything that's separating all the extension, uh, all instructions, you get all of them. You get all the comments. That's already 2 thirds of the value of a PHP code script. And then you start having the actual tokens. The tokens from there are not organized. You have to organize them yourself. And you end up with an AST, abstract syntactic tree. There are other representation of the code that can be done here. I just have one of them. There is control flow. There is uh, data flow. There are other representation that are needed for static analysis. But this is one of them. At least the tokens are read from the code and put somewhere in the database. The database is just semantic code stored in a nice, organized way. 
From there, just as we started with this session, we need to find what we're looking for, okay? What I call a code reference. What you want to be able to look in the codes and ask the database about. So there are a lot of them. Migration is one of the subjects. Uh, security, performance, code quality. Um, there is Kali, Kali, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's uh, the, the second one is supposed to be um, a reference to build good PHP code. Okay? There's a number of, of speakers who is using that, and they have a, a recommendation like do not use else. Um, I don't remember the, all of them. There are, there's a short list of 10 recommendations to, to do some good code. Okay? It's a choice like another. It's a set of rules. That's another reference. So we could get them, understand the rules, and look for that in the, into the code. So we need a, a kind of reference. Then we have the database, and we get the report. Does that happen? Does, uh, as I said, it's a, it's, a new, it's a new field for PHP in general, but there are already a number of them. I have sourced five of them that we're going to review together, so you have an idea of how it works. And maybe, maybe a number of others will show up. I know that uh, it's not the only, uh, the only available. So PHP 7 more and PHP 7 CC are both uh, focused on migration to PHP 7. So that's going to help us right now. Uh, Fan and Exacat are the two most general current one, and they are doing lots of different things. And PHP Inspection is the one that is integrated in PHP Storm ID. So let's start with this one. The two first ones are actually not updated too much. I'm not sure they're going to follow up into PHP 7.1, but if you're still in PHP 5, then that's going to be a good base for you to start with. They're going to report things. So PHP 7 more, PHP 7 migration assistant report. That's why there are more. It's uh, on GitHub. It works with regex. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that using the tokenizer is the best to have the semantic value of different tokens inside the code. This one works with regex. So that would be PHP 3 old style. Just get the code, regex everything, and find things that is interesting. Lots of keywords. It produces an MD file, and it looks like that. So I passed all the tools on the same code, on myself, actually. Um, and here is a list of things that, are, that was found. You can see process, processing time for about 1,000 files of PHP code, 25 seconds. You have 25 seconds to run the tool, right? And you get uh, not so many of them. 12 results. That's way too low. Even though my code already works on PHP 7, I expect them to, to bring back lots of um, false positive, things that are, not really thing, that, that are not a problem because I checked them, but probably looks like, uh, look like it. Especially at the bottom, you can see the regex are failing because all of those are comments. Okay? The only one that's really a problem is function get args. That should be checked. But it's fast. Uh, it actually found a number of results, so it's interesting. Second one, PHP 7 CC. It was even faster. It was started before. This one is based on a parser. So as I mentioned, from the tokens, which is like basically Lego bricks that has been smashed down on the floor, PHP 5 PHP parser from Nikki, which is one of the main author, author of PHP 7. So. Um, it's already rebuilt into an AST. So you don't have to build that. You just have to query the AST. Okay? This AST is only on memory. So if you want to do a big file or a big code base, that's going to be a lot of memory. That works, but lots of memory. Um, anyway, that works on PHP 5. And the result is also very fast. Actually, it's faster. We don't get any more uh, MD file, but we still get them online. And I just got even shorter, uh, shorter number of uh, results. I counted about 27 analyses for migration. Fun function get R was consistent with the previous one, and it found some other things. So as usual with static analysis at that point, all of the different projects are usually f either focusing or have a very specific set of rules that do not overlap with the other. It's always interesting to mix and match. Okay, feel free to uh, um, use one, but maybe add the others as a complement. Good enough? You, you tell me again if, uh, if I'm blocking the view. Any question at, the, at that point? 
Am I boring you or? No? OK. So let's add an extra one. Fan. Fan is the brainchild by Erasmus. So as usual, it carries a lot of uh, credibility. And it has been taken over by someone at Etsy. OK? Contrary to the two previous ones, it's being worked on a very regular basis. I think a lot of things every time, every day. So that's interesting. It's, it's working only on PHP 7 with an extension called AST. That's very convenient because it builds. Yeah, good. Um, but it means that you, are, you, are, you can only run it on PHP 7. It works on PHP 5 code. It only runs on PHP 7. And you need the AST itself. Okay. The advantage is that it's really fast. And it's obviously open source, so you can, you can see a number of things. It's kind of opinionated. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of feedback, more than I expected. Um, let me give you a few details. So if the first one were nice and we had some MD3 and co uh, uh, MD file and colors, this one is just raw PHP power. So it's like <laughs> file of text. And it doesn't actually do any, any effort to find the code. Okay, the two first one, you, you point them a, a folder, and then they will find code inside. Fan says, no, you give me a file. And if you don't give me a file, you need to give me a list of files, but you find them yourself. Anyway, here is a number of things um, that has been found along the way. Um, as I said, it's not specific on PHP migration. So it will, learn, it will teach you about things that are not uh, only on migration. And it's most of the time looking for things that you can find inside a file. Okay, so there are a few uh, features now are more on a project <laughs> approach, but it will find inconsistency inside a file, like a local variable that has been used and not defined. That's good. But if it's a global one and the global is, is uh, spread across several files, then it's probably not going to find it. Here, what happens, for example, um, there, there are class, and I think the, 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 the variable, the object of the class, is initially, in, initially uh, with null. So it can find this, and then it says, OK, this is the object is null, and then you're trying to call a method on that null. Of course, in between, there is an instantiation which has not been spotted. Uh, what else? Uh, un undeclared variable is really nice, and that works for property too. Um, and what else? It's also using heavily the new return type. So if you type in everything in your application, so type in the argument and the return type, then it will do an extremely good job as checking, oh, you're using this variable. I mean, you're calling this function, which returns that kind of type, and then you try to put it here. That doesn't work. OK, so that's the place that's interesting. And it kind of defeats the fact that PHP initially was was something that's completely uh, typeless, right? Because at that point, we're doing type checking, but it also helps a lot. As you see, 84 analyses, this is the one that's the most complete. It's still very fast, and 300 results. So I, I have a lot of things to check when, when I read this. The last one is my own, my, my own tool at that point. Um, Exacad is using yet another system for its own a uh, AST because we read the tokens and we rebuild everything into the database, which means that we can, contrary to the three first, we can actually handle that uh, and handle the different version of PHP from 5.2 to 7.2 or, or the new ones. There is no dependency on executing PHP, it, uh, specific version of PHP to be able to understand it. Um, it's uh, able to run everything, and it got a very nice HTML version. So you can, have, uh, you can have some good feedback. It's also on text if you really want to see text or MDs. Um, it's doing the compatibility things. Again, I say this is the base for this presentation. It's doing a lot of other things. So for example, whenever there is a new PHP version, like we got the 7.0.10 last week, right? Um, I get all the lists, all the different bugs that are being fixed. I check which ver function they affect, the impact. And there is a list of the different bugs that are actually impacting your code, which means that every single version, you can check, oh, is this may have an impact on my code or not. You get a list of uh, needed extensions. So if you want to push that to DevOps, there's an, uh, that, that's interesting inventory because the machine will see, oh, you are using those functions and those classes. This means that these extensions are needed. 
and the corresponding uh, directives. So it's doing a lot more than just compatibility. It's also the slowest. Finally, finally, PHP inspection, which is not the same as the previous one. All the previous one work on a repository. Okay, if, even if you just give it file names, it works on a repository. This one works inside an IDE. That's yet another solution for, for using the AST because uh, PHP Storm actually has its own representation in Java of the PHP code. And from there, uh, the advantage is that you can directly do the fix inside the code. So that looks like that for those of you who want to do it. You download it directly from PHP Storm. Uh, it's automated. Then the first time it's a little slow, and then you get all those uh, feedbacks. There is one part of the panel which has all the, f uh, the f feedback with, um, I would say, a recipe, a kind of category of uh, analysis. Then you have the name of the file, and you have the actual uh, presentation. On the other side, explanation, and um, Vladimir is also working on, sh on quick fix. Things that are obviously easy to fix, you just say quick fix, and it will fix everything for you. It does not happen all the time, so fixing you know, pre-increment pre, uh, pre versus uh, post-increment, that's a no-brainer, it's easy. If it's removing a die and replacing that with an ex exception uh, throwing, that's another problem, so it's, it's not, it doesn't uh, have a quick fix. There, so finally, if whatever I've listed here is not interesting, or you have a bright idea, you want to check coupling, you want to check your MVC, um, your MVC uh, concepts in the code, like uh, all the, te the templates have no access to the database, things like that. So if you want to run to your own, um, there are different tools. Um, yeah, I have a list of them online. This is, uh, this is just a list of different tools. If you're using PHP 7, go directly to AST. That's probably the fastest for everyone. If you're on 5.5, there's the parser. Avoid regex in general, but it works. So I have to admit that it's a bad idea, but it still works. OK? From there, you probably just need an, an idea in your code. What do you want to check in an automated way? And that would be a good base. Then probably push it online to see what happens. There's a lot of creativity at that moment. As I said, uh, people checking uh, different um, coupling inside, the, in, inside the, the application. That's always an interesting thing to know. And you don't want to spend too much time checking for that manually. Automating it is really important. There. Ah, now that's going to be for you to work. That's the, that's the second part. Now, now that I've shown you where to find more information, so when I'm gone, you can still go, go online and be, uh, learn about PHP 7.2, 7.3, whatever it's going to be happen. I've told you how to look for the, that in the code. I expect you now, we are going to, to cover now all the features, not all of them, but a good number of features and backward incompatibilities from 5.6 to 7.1, 2, and things like that. I will tell you about the feature, and you're going to tell me how you find that in the code and what you're going to replace it with. I will allow you to talk once, and then after that, you let the other guys talk. <laughs> OK? okay? <coughs> Everyone is awake? I will point fingers. Be careful. And the elephant is there with me to check every one of you. So I have um, different categories of things we would like to, um, to find. Uh, incompatible change, we're going to treat new features in the same way. And there is everything in between. So lots of things to check. And we're going to cover uh, uh, features from 5.6 to 7.2. A few of them will be tricky. So. Um, what kind of answer I expect from you? Um, code knowledge, we have already said code knowledge, so your own knowledge of the code, that could be an answer. If it's not sufficient, I will tell you. Linting, <coughs> gripping, static analysis, log or error reporting. Okay, This one is when you run it and PHP tells you about it, you can check in the, in the logs and make sure that uh, it, uh, this error appears or not. Okay, And unit test. Sometimes the problem will just appear in unit test. So 
Those are the different answers that I can expect. Of course, you can elaborate. Just don't mention the, the third answer and, and expect me to believe that. But elaborate. Those are the, the different uh, tools you can use. Everyone is, is fine with that? Good. Let's start with incompatibilities. Incompatibilities itself could be, um, could be um, subcategorized, again, in three, in three uh, categories. Remove features. So we mentioned split already. That's a good candidate for a remove feature that's going to be a problem. Added features. Oh, how come added features are going to be a problem? Adding a feature should add problem? If I have redundant code, if this, my app code is doing exactly that. We're, we're talking about incompatibilities. That would be a new feature. A new feature is something nice that doesn't have an impact yet on your code. OK, we'll see later. And things that I call collateral damages. Things that change, but you don't know, you don't know about it, and it still impact your code. So let's see. Remove features. Let's start with extensions. There's a good list of extensions that have been removed from 5.6 to 7.1. Eric. MSSQL, MySQL, Sybase, and MyCrypt. No, it's MCrypt. Ah, that's MCrypt, not MyCrypt. That does not exist. Ooh, who's using MSSQL? Good, so you're not impacted. Uh, who's using MySQL? Anyone's still using? You're still using MySQL extension? WordPress. WordPress <laughs> plus. It's, so it is. It's, the it's five five. using MySQL I. Yes. So. Five five plus. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah, that's legacy code, right? OK. So that, yeah, maybe. What else? Who's using MySQL uh, still again? One? Again? For what? WordPress? No, it's, uh, it's a legacy system. OK. So it's also used PHP 5.3. OK, so that's still compatible. Sybase? No, no one is using that anymore. M Mcrypt? Ooh, Mcrypt is going to be more difficult, right? No. OK. Um, so let's go. Um, how do you remove, how do you check if your code has to be updated on, for example, MySQL? Hmm? Grepping? So grepping? Yeah, how come? What do you grep for? Underscore. Yeah. Search the files and Yeah, easy enough. Easy enough. Um, extension Ereg, how do you remove that? How do you check that your code is, is not impacted by Ereg? Someone else. Once you talked, you, you're free for 10 minutes. <laughs> Someone else. How do you remove Ereg? You, you know what's Ereg, right? It's an old regular expression. We have in PHP, we have two of them, PCRA, which is the Perl regular expressions, and the old Ereg, which is based on System 5. I think it's a system call or something like that. The old one is not updated anymore, while the Perl one is, are being upgraded, and we have lots of new features, and it's updated and secure. So usually, whatever you can do with uh, per, uh, Ereg, you can do it with the uh, Ereg, you can do with Pereg, so usually you, you drop that. So. How do you get? How do you check if your code has uh, Ereg? Come on, that's an easy one, right? Search. I think most of the Ereg functions start with Ereg. So yeah. Yeah, oh, that's that's a good idea. So you you, you try to get the same. Okay, uh, you, you're right. That I'm, I'm I'm sure you you feel the, the the trap. Here is the list of things that you should look for. So modern functions usually mo modern extension usually have uh, an, uh, a prefix. So MySQL is one of them. Um, on the prefix one, mcrypt, every function is prefixed with mcrypt. So we can use this strategy of looking for the prefix. Okay, We may end up with a, a few extra ones, but that's not good. Except that Ereg is probably a PHP FI extension, or whatever that means at that point, right? Which means that they have no consistency over, over naming. 
meaning that you have to rely on the full list of, ex of functions to check if only. Now, luckily enough, except for split, most of the others you don't know about because no one using them at all, OK? So it's, it's not so bad. But it's worth checking if you have other extension and not rely only on the prefix, especially on the old ones. Uh, as far as I remember, for example, it's not gone, but LDAP extension, which is also full of security <coughs> problems, LDAP extensions has, I don't know, like uh, 90 different functions, and two of them do not have the prefix because it's um, encoding changing functions, and they didn't want to link that to, to LDAP, so they decided that those two would have, I don't know, Unicode decode or something like that, and then you can get struck by that. OK, so removing for extensions, yeah, the underscore is, uh, I mean, the prefix is interesting, but, um, but uh, not, do not rely only on, only on that. Second one, remove extension, remove functions now. This is a short list of functions that have been removed by PHP 7 that you cannot use anymore. How do you look for, I always search for them. Yeah, again, grep is easy. So what, what is the challenge here? The grep is easy on obvious. Keywords usually grep search. But where is the challenge? Replacing the function? Yeah, you, you, need, you need a list of functions. You need to find the list of functions that have been disappearing to make sure that you do not forget any of them. OK? For that, usually the manual is pretty consistent. So Go there, and you find the list of uh, remove functions, and then you can grab all of them one after each other. What has, what has been gone? Here, call user methods and call user method array. Who's using that? That's PHP 4 code. Okay? At least it has been renamed rec recently by call user func. Why did they decide to make it really short? I don't know. But um, it used to be function and method, and now it's func, but the, the two of them have just been renamed. You can also directly use them by putting the name of the function you want to call into a variable and call it with the parentheses after. Okay? So it's, it's, uh, it's easy. It's an easy one. Um, there were removed extensions. There were removed functions. What else, can, what else can PHP remove? I mean, the PHP group can remove from one, function, from one version to the other. They remove functions, they remove extensions, they can remove. Hmm? Index. Index? Syntax. Syntax. Ooh. Like? Short array is an extension. They do not, they do not remove yet the uh, array, the old version, the longer array call. I don't. Uh, I'm interested, actually. Um, I don't think I have any example in mind. Syntax could be dropped, but most of the time it do not. No, they can remove variables. Well, there's only one example, OK? But in PHP 5.5, uh, HTTP raw post data has been completely removed. OK? Um, this is. Usually you don't use that, OK? This looks like the old, who's been using PHP 4? One? <laughs> You're really good at raising your hand. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only one. Every time I ask a question, um, I, I'll, try find, I'll try to find something. Um, in PHP 4, we, we didn't use underscore get, underscore post. We, go, we used HTTP post vars. It was like a huge name. And then we got the same syntax, uh, syntactic array. And in five, they decided to drop that. And we just say underscore get, underscore post. A few of them were, were kept because they were like, I don't know, under the radar or something. And that's one of the old dinosaurs that are still here. Row post data is actually the amount of information that the PHP script receives before it actually pours them and put them for your convenient use into those dollar underscore uh, globals and cookies and environment. Okay? 
If there are a few uh, applications, apparently uh, PDF forms, and I think ActionScript also, that relies on the actual input. They get a huge blob of XML. May I'm not exactly sure about that. If any one of you is a, is a pro of those, you, you can tell me. Tell me, but sometimes they do not want PHP to actually parse all of that and put that into dollar underscore get and things like that. But they want to get the blob of it and analysis. Okay? That's what people used to have. So they use this variable to access the blob, the, the incoming information, and they will parse it on their own. Okay? And now it's gone. It's re being replaced with the PHP input. So you open it like a file, F open, and then you can read it. It used to be more uh, inconvenient to use, but now it's really a file. So you can open it, go inside, just uh, move the cursor inside, go back, and rewrite again, things like that. Well, not rewrite, but reread it again, things like that. Okay. So just be careful. It's unusual. This is the only example I have. And as far as we're moving toward PHP 7.2 and 3, I don't have that example anymore. But it happens that sometimes a whole variable disappears. Um, another, one, another thing that disappears on a more uh, regular basis is INI, directives. Things you've been using, but that when that's configuring your PHP, Maybe you rely on it because <coughs> you're checking that this option or not has been, has been uh, activated. And now it's gone. And especially in PHP 5.6 or 5.5 maybe, we got six of them that disappeared that went into only one. Okay? So everything for MB string, MB string and uh, in, um, econv were turned into d for core set. Now, question is, how do you look for impacted code? Code that is impacted by a directive that disappears. Suggestion? Maybe? No? No, no idea? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I was looking someone behind. I know you're talking also a lot. You're going to move front so I can, I can keep you. Uh, Checked. Anything else? How do you check for those? This is directive, right? It's going to change the way your PHP behave. I mean, you really can. Runtime. If you're using something like MB string and you're not default uh, charge in the function call, uh, if you uh, change from Latin to UTF, you just have to go manually all functions and either remove if there's the wrong charge set and add it to the default charge set. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. It's oh, it's, it's a lot of work, that's for sure. That I understand. Um, I'm not sure exactly sure the, to follow the, the process you, you mentioned. Well, our uh, million code line uh, code base is uh, mixed with you. Yeah. OK, yeah. yeah. So Classic on this. Experiencing something with those two. OK. So, so what is your suggestion for, for checking the impact of those vari uh, directives? OK. The first step you can go is what kind of functions or classes or different structure is impacted by those directives. The first one you can check is functions that do manipulate them, which are what? What are the functions that allows you to manipulate, which means read, write, I mean, write, uh, read or check, check the value of a directive? I and I set, I and I get, and the others. What are the others? That's going to end up in your plate again. We can go with all those I and I, right? I'm going to cheat a little bit. No, it's not there on the next one. You have all those I and I, right? And I set, and I, and I get, and I get all, right? And there's another one along the way, along the problems we, we, we met with Eric. There is also config CFG get all which is the original conf configuration. We also look for all the functions that are directly impacted by them. Which are the functions that are impacted by the core set? You have a short list? Really? Ah, I'm not sure. Icon, for example, you give it, you give it the explicitly the, the, the so they are not impacted. There will be you have to to explicitly set them inside the code. So 
those are not impacted. That's actually very funny because those two directives here have no impact on the function that are linked to it. There are others. There are others that are a lot more hidden. String encoding, decoding in the functions. Could be yeah. Convert. Are you looking at my screen? <laughs> <laughs> I start to understand now why you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, HTML entities has been the worst, but it's not the only one. You're right, HTML uh, entity decode, uh, HTML entity uh, encode. The worst you've, we've seen is this one. Up to PHP 5.3, HTML entities has been using uh, by default ISO. Okay, again, those are, those are the worst learners doing the, the PHP code, so of course everyone is impacted. In 5.4, they decided that UTF-8 was a much better idea. So they switched it, and all the German people came back complaining that all the code was now broken, because some of the translation, I mean, some of the characters they have in German uh, language are not, well, just a few of them, are not compatible between ISO and UTF. And then, probably a little more stealth, stealthily, uh, in 5.6, they switch again the default value to default, to, um, to default core set which was by default itself UTF-8. So this change has actually pretty much unseen. Okay? But it means in PHP 5.6, the value is not always the same. The default value for, for core set is not always the same. Okay? That has been a lot of problems for everyone's handling with the encoding. So where do we look for? Good for the photo. So for core set in general, we look for all the functions that are dealing with the i i, any set, any get, any get all, any restore, which won't get any uh, argument, but it's going to put back everything as normal. And there is this one, which do not start with, with i i, but it's still in the, uh, in the list of them. OK? Then um, you can search in your PHP i i and access if they have uh, an impact. And the three other ones that have impact, uh, that are impacted, HTML entities, decode, and special cores. So you start from the directive. You try to understand where it has impact, which are the different functions that may change their behavior depending on the, uh, on the directive. And then you have to look for them. Okay? From there, we can start again with a keyword search. So that's a grab that's sufficient especially with names long like that. It does not happen too often that you have it as a variable name or a class name. Fair enough? I think I'm going to put the qu next question on that side. I see people nodding, but not answering much. <coughs> Good. Next one. Oh, that's going to be an interesting challenge. Pereg replace. Pereg replace with the infamous E option. Everyone knows about it? So the slash E option means that when you do a replace, the, the, well, the, the pattern matching will be done as usual, but the replacement will be done with code that is actually provided as a second argument, and it will be treated as PHP code, compiled and run, and the result, it's supposed to return at least a string, and this string will be the replacement, which allows you to look for something, do some calculation on it, and then replace it in the, in the uh, initial string. Inconveniently, it's also a place where people like to put uh, super globals and values coming from the outside. So at that point, it means that basically you can run any PHP code from, uh, incoming, from, the, uh, from the incoming var variable. So to avoid those security problems, it has been completely shut down and removed and replaced by two of function here, Pereg replace callback. Well, the callback is some PHP code that is also compiled and can include uh, variables um, at execution time, but it's, it's less prone to errors. And the other one, when you have too many of them and you want to run several of them at the same time, you can use Pereg replace callback. That's a really nice feature and it's going to be uh, speeding up your code. If you have even just two Pereg replace callback one after each other, and you want to speed up your code, just move that and turn that into a PHP Pereg replace callback array. <laughs> yeah, they're not easy on, on speakers, I guess. Um, and that will be fast. Good, so now we have a good challenge. 
that side of the, of the, of the room now. How do we look for, how do we look for this problem? Remember, we have, you have good answers, which are your, your knowledge, PHP linting, uh, static analysis, error logs, unit testing, and the sixth one is crap. Who wants to try? I'll do the, front, the, the last row at the after that. OK, come on, someone. How do you look for that problem? Easy one. Maybe search for that. Yeah, search for the applica for the, for the, um, search for the, the, <coughs> the Perig replace itself. That's going to be at least turn your million line of code into maybe a few thousand regex. That's a good start. That's probably not sufficient, OK? And it's going to bring you a lot of false positive. Can you go further than that? Can we grab on top of that on E? No, that's not going to help. Because first, Perig replace has 3E itself. So probably you're going to end up with something, with, uh, with the same names. Uh, the other thing is <laughs> the delimiter here, you know, looking for something like slash e, which could be a good idea. You have to know that um, any non-alphanumeric character can be used as a delimiter. And if you take a look, even just like WordPress, they are using probably 8 to 10 different delimiters into their regex. So unless you have, you know, uh, a code uh, reference that says we need to do slash or we need to do, I don't know, pound or, well, <clears throat> you're probably going to end up missing a lot of them. So uh, you cannot really go further than that. You have to deal with a lot of false positive. Yeah, but actually, you can match it against the second uh, Python. If you are good with regex and grep, you can search for the first hyphen and then anything and then any alpha, number, uh, alpha characters to, uh, modifiers. Yeah. And if there's E. Oh. The yeah, you, you, can, you can look for, for the string here. Try to guess the first per slash, right? You don't need to know the uh, delimiters. You just have to lock, uh, find E in the last uh, 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 alphabetic characters before the second hyphen. OK, so you look for the E at the last, right? Knowing that there are about 15 different options that can be put there. Yeah, so it doesn't matter because you have something as the delimiter. And the thing is, the delimiter here is not really known. And there may be a lot of letters here. So if you're good with regex, yeah, kind of you, can, you can reduce. You can reduce. We're, we're just, anyway, regex is going to work, but it's just going to reduce the load. So, Probably the best is just look for Perig replace, which is the only um, easy keyword. Going further is probably a lot of work. Static analysis may help. Static analysis here may be a little more clever because detecting the, the, um, uh, the delimiter is something possible. You can understand that here it's just a, a literal, but if it's a concatenation already by itself, you can, st can still spot it. But even though it's also a lot of a lot of work just for for that, so the easy the easy one just function name that's if, that's sufficient. And after that, your knowledge of the code will just you know clean that pretty fast. Um, as we are here, you use the double sorry, grip, right? hmm? you can use the pipe so double grip. So first you grip the break replace. Then yeah, and then break it and go a little further. Yeah, refine it. Refining is uh, is a little yeah. Yeah, should I use the pipe and second grip piece? Maybe the slash e. Yeah, that, that will filter a little bit. But it's, it's difficult to go beyond that, the first the first one. Yeah, sometimes they may store the pattern in a variable, then we are kind of <laughs> off. <laughs> so what we hear, here is the way you call a uh, Perig replace callback. Perig replace callback, you put, you put the list of patterns. The patterns are the key. And then on the other side, you put the callback. Okay, it works with function names. So if you just put a string with the function name, it will call the function itself. And the functional is supposed to return 
the, the values that, is, well, that will do the, repl the replacement. Okay. Uh, what, I don't, what, I, what I don't like in this um, structure is that it makes a simple call into a huge <coughs> piece of code. Okay. Um, that's what, I'm, what, what I don't like too much. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's really convenient. As you can see, I, we try to replace ABBBB by something else. So we spot the A's and we return all the A's in uppercase. So that's a, that's a very simple and compact way. The other one here, um, this is a callback. So we can actually uh, use a static here. And every time we return the, the, the B itself made into a, a per value, and we add some extra uh, static. So the, we count the number of times we've been there. And the spec is an, uh, a value that is actually extracted from the context. So it's still a very complex way of, of coding things. We can grab information. We can cycle on itself. And that will be done in one, uh, in one call. So in, in the end, this is faster than just calling several times in a row the same pareg replace callback one after each other. So whenever you can, um, this one is a good idea. And I don't know why I have that. The other one I want to remind you, if you have simple replacement, pareg replace accept arrays as syntax. Again, it's better to use several, uh, I mean, only one pareg re pare replace rather than several calls one after each other. The only thing I don't understand is that on this one, it's an array of pattern and the matching array of, of replacement. And if you remember what I just shown you on the other one, this one is an array where the keys are the pattern and the replacement is the value. No comment. Yes, but otherwise that won't fit on the slide. <laughs> You're right. For something that simple, yeah, please don't use that. But um, otherwise, it, it, yeah, maybe I should have did that. I just try to have code that compact and readable on the on the slides. So that's probably a problem for me here. Um, what's next? Hmm. Oh, one problem for seven one. Oh, I wish Davy was here. I need more explanation on that. In PHP 7, well, we mentioned that uh, call user function is the, one, the way to go now, right? Uh, if you want to dynamically call a function, you use that. And here is a list of functions that in PHP 7.1 cannot be called dynamically itself. <sighs> Let me try again. You cannot put extract into a string and, and uh, into a variable, let's say dollar name, and call dollar uh, name to make it a function call. Okay? You can put ester to lower into a string and then call it as a callable, okay? a array walk, array uh, filter, things like that, or operate replace callback, that works. Okay? But nowadays, it is not possible to call directly those functions here to uh, dynamically. You cannot put them in a string and then call that again. Uh, I think I, have, I haven't have enough information about this one. That's a new in PHP 7.1. So in 7.1, that will happen. I don't think it's very useful to put those into, um, into variables to call them. But it's more a security feature, because those are exactly the tool that uh, viruses, whenever you are, your website is infected by people trying to inject code, they try to use those to get information. Okay, uh, I think extract and compact, especially to, a to a overwrite variables, is very convenient. So that that would be a, that would be a good way to um, you know search for information. Parse error with one argument. That's also a security feature. Um, if you just so parse error is going to um, break down and parse a URL, a query string, and return that as an array. But it will only return that as an array if you give the second argument. And that would fill the array with the value it finds. If you just put one argument, that's a security problem, because it will actually directly put that into globals. So always, always use parse str with two arguments. So the values are stored somewhere you, must, you, you, you control. While on the other hand, if you just put that on the other one uh, with only one argument, it will just put that in the global scope and overwrite everything else. 
Okay? So all of them, I think, are for security reasons. Um, now the question, how do you spot that you're using dynamical calls on those functions? Okay, let's do some of the, the, the guys that there are for the last row because I haven't seen any answers from there. Then we'll be back to the table. Suggestions? Static analysis? Yeah. Hmm? Static, static, yeah. static analysis, yeah, that's probably the answer for everything, right? Um, <laughs> But what do you spot? What do you try to for? So static analysis, we, we, we're not grepping. We, we can do things like, oh, this is a concatenation that will end up being extract or thing like that. But how do we know what, what, what is going to be the, 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 our focus will, with static analysis? Past looking at logs for the errors. Pretty much the only way to find that would be looking for those strings. Yeah, looking for them into inside a string and probably looking for them inside a string or a concatenation. No, because usually those viruses, they try to hide the actual values by, by breaking the, the, the full keyword into smaller pieces that they rebuild. Okay, so different strategies is instead of putting extract, if we, we want to get this extra, the example, they will say dollar $s is uh, ext ext dot tract and then of course that will rebuild the full name but most of the grep will fail because it cannot find extract as a one word other strategies is using all those sequence characters we're going to see a few of them later but um, for example if you want to uh, if you use slash zero and then the octal representation of a character PHP will turn will, will actually replace that into the string so let me think just by, by, by from the top of my head, but if you, so, you write something like EX slash zero, and I think it's like 72 or something like that, that's a T, and then racked, that again will defeat any Pereg uh, grep system, but it will still write extract inside your string, which at execution time will be extract, and then you can call it. So looking for the words, yeah, and static analysis here can take the literals, and say, okay, here is something that could be actually uh, pre-processed even before running the, uh, the code. And I can decide that this ex extract or this complex sequence is actually extract and I will warn people. So I think, yeah, static analysis can go further than just uh, per reg replace, I mean, uh, regex searching. Anyway, I don't think that those functions are very classically used inside uh, callable. So I really want some more information on that. So we're back to a problem that we had before, added features. PHP is adding features, and they have backward incompatibilities with our code. How come? New classes are made of stuff you have already defined. Yes, that's a good one. Here is the evolution, the, the, the table of evolution of, of definitions. Okay, And those are just cores. PHP is adding roughly 10 new functions every version. OK, that's a rough mean. Uh, another 10 classes and ar around 30, I would say, as a mean, 30 new constants. Which means that if, by bad luck, you have the same name defined in your code, then you're probably going to have um, a conflict, and that will be wrong. OK? so. Here is a few examples, get resources, int div, easy trouble, and be scrub. That's going to be interesting. Um, I'm not sure you have a chance if anyone tried to have a name of a constant like spareg just in time, stack limit error. This one, we're pretty safe. <laughs> On the other hand, for the, oh. old, the, the, the old guys like me, we had the famous fiasco of the date class. Someone in PHP 5.1.1 decided that it was interesting to have a date class. Who has a date class in their own code? No. Someone is lying here. Everyone had a date class at that time, okay? 
result uh, well which uh, led to a lot of of you know backward incompatibilities everyone has to change many things so they actually removed it and the 512 the fall back and get some extra uh, new new classes name probably they're not going to do, do to do that because like for example php 7 was tested against a number of frameworks and classic applications so they they checked that everything was uh, was okay uh, on the other hand, we haven't seen it that yet, but there's a new class called Error, which is kind of a classic name for, an, for a class, right? So that may have an impact on your code. It's on the global space. If you're inside your name, your name space, that's probably going to be safe, but you have to know about it. So let's see a few functions that are new. Int div, integer division, that's the contrary for the modulo. We, we know the percentage. Okay, we do, you do, uh, for example, a seven percentage three, and we get one. Okay, that's the remainder from an integer division of seven by three. Int div is going to give you the number. It's I don't remember how it, it's it's uh, what's his name. The numerator. So again, if we if we start seven in div three, we'll get end up with two. Because we do 2 multiply 3 plus the remainder 1, and we got the 7. We didn't have any ways to do that until we got actually into div. OK? Get resources is the list of resources we have, you have open. So resources being a resource in, in terms of PHP, files, database connections, PDF files, documents, things like that. If you want to know how many files you have open, then you can go there. The one that are being opened at that moment will be listed here. If you have closed it, it's gone. Um, error clear last. Remove the last error. Mem OK, garbage collector cl clean caches. I've mentioned uh, MB scrub. MB, sc MB scrub, multibyte scrub. It's uh, MB string a function that will clean a string and remove everything that is not compatible with whatever encoding you're asking. Uh, what else? And the period replace callback array we have seen. OK? Next, collaterals, things that have changed that will have impact on the code. OK? So these not new features, but just changed. Here is one. Here is one we got that made an update. Up to now, invalid octal are just silently updated and turn into whatever PHP can do with them, OK? So here, in PHP 5, this is 0. It's a complex way to write 0, right? You know, there are shorter ways. But if you really want to write it this way, that's 0. OK, why? Because PHP 5 will say, OK, that's a 0, so I start with an octal. I know that everything later will be from 0 to 7, and that's all. And then you end up starting with the 8, and 8 is not an octal. That's, that's too large. That should be 10. Right? So you say, oh, that's 0. I stop. I cannot understand that. I stop. And then I got up to now 0. So that's a 0. OK, it will analyze and parse the, the, the integer until it will stop. So either at the end, either something is wrong. So that used to be completely silent. And I know that has been upgraded to a fatal error, meaning that if you have any incompatible or invalid octal in your code, you're going to know that very fast. Question? How do you spot them in the code? Yes. Hmm? Testing. testing? No. No testing. Come on. That's an easy one. It's written there. How do you spot errors with octals? Linting. Linting. It's a, process. It's a fatal error. You link with PHP 7, that will tell you all the, uh, the problem of octals you have. OK? That's an easy one. So another invalid octal, that would be for 7.1. And that's the same kind of the same problem that the previous one. But inside string, we mentioned the sequence. OK? Everything that's inside a sequence that, um, that PHP will actually turn into something else. So here, here, slash, 0, and then the next character will be octally defined, a character. 
thing is, PHP do not take, do not make any check of the first <laughs> one. Okay, so you can end up with the same because it will just say, oh, slash and integer. That's good enough for me. I just jump and and start comparing the two and then the next ones. And then we end up with two characters that are supposed to be different, but are not the same, and the, which are actually the same. Um, the thing is, yeah, how do we spot that? And now it's not written on the screen, so it's a little order. How are we warned that this, this is invalid string? Previously, I mentioned it was a fatal error, and it's not written anymore on the screen. So if it's not a fatal error, because it's, not, it's too harsh, it's going to be a runtime Yeah, probably. Then, if it's a runtime error, it's a? From the logs. Yeah, we look, we check in the log, it's a warning. So we'll get a warning telling us that something is wrong. And, oh, no. We get a warning on the pre previous one. Next one, still with numbers, and that's going to be a pain in the ass in PHP 7.1. PHP 7.1 is going to, to raise a warning whenever it cannot perform an addition, I mean, an arithmetic uh, operation. And uh, have, have actually valid numbers. So those are not valid numbers. In PHP 5, it works. Why? Because just like we did for the octals, it will say, OK, this is the first string. Good. I need a plus. I need numbers. OK, backtrack. One. Fine. I know what that's the number. Space. I don't understand that. I stop. I just get keep the one. And then I do the same for bananas. Two, I understand. Space, I don't understand. I keep the one and two, and that's three. And I end up with a rec with the result of three. Now, in PHP 7.1, it's going to yell at us. Anytime you're, you're using numbers that have you know, unit, like currency unit after. Do you put currency unit before or after in Singapore? Before. <laughs> I like the fact you have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been in, th in four different countries, so I, I know that they change, OK? And then, but I mean, when it's your own country, usually you know, right? <laughs> who's, here, who's from Singapore uh, here? One? OK, OK. That <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I'll ask that next, uh, next time before we start. Whatever. OK, so uh, if, you're, if you're doing e-commerce and you used to first put the unit, you know, currency unit after, and then you think, oh, I have to do the grand total, and then you do the, uh, the update of that, or in the, the sum of all of them, that will be good, but PHP will yell. If you manipulate physic units, I mean, every scientific unit, usually the, the, the unit is after, and you manipulate that after doing the, the formatting, that will be too bad. Whew, how can we spot those problems? This is definitely an execution problem. PHP is not going to yell at that. It's a notice. So just like you mentioned, it's execution. PHP will probably not, well, will not yell at that. It's not a fatal error. It's not going to compile that. How do we spot these problems? Search for strings with a concatenation with a plus. Okay, um, concatenation with a plus. I mentioned it's okay. I I've corrected myself and said it's every arithmetic operation. So plus, minus, modulo, and all of them, and that also includes l um, logical combinations, and or XOR or things like that. So. That's a lot. That's a lot, but that's still possible. What else? The other things we have is currently I've given you two literals. But everything that is dynamical, if you're, if you're kind of you know, uh, uh, solving, uh, how do say that? Uh, saving on filtering and get a dollar get value and add it with a zero, then it's going to yell. OK? Here, we, on, we, only, we, we cannot, well, this is an execution problem, so we'll probably start with the logs. That's probably the, good, the first good source. Uh, in terms of static analysis, 
Beside literal, we'll probably cannot do anything more than that. Okay? We can spot if a variable is directly used is in, a, in an addition, but we need also to understand where it's coming from before deciding that it could raise an error or not. Okay? And that's going to be completely dynamical. Okay? On the other hand, yeah, we can check the, um, most of the code, all the literals, and say, OK, if it starts with, uh, with a number, then we, we can mention at least it's going to be invalid and maybe raise an error at some point. But there is nothing more than that, I guess. Very, very, uh, it's very data-centric, so I don't think we can, go, we can go further than checking the logs in terms of production. Fair enough? Do we need to clean all those notice and warning? Well, currently it's a it's a warning, so we, we can we can we can shove it we can shove it under the under under the rug uh, under the rug. Um, but we've seen already other other things that have been upgraded from a warning to a fatal error. So it's probably better to get the the good habit of cleaning that, and then not be stuck because on PHP eight it's going to be a backward incompatible change. But you're right, there is no rush for that. And again, if you're in 5, 6 at the moment, as long as you're not moving to 7, 1, you, you're, you're fine, right? right? But it's part of the migration. And you can still shove it under the rug, this one in particular. But I'm pretty sure this is going to raise a lot of hell. I expect a number, a lot of feedback. And it may be just a, feed, a, a hell that will start with, oh, we switched to 7, 1, and now the logs are filling up. And I think that we're going to start with that. From there, people will go in the logs and start, oh, this one is coming a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We have to fix that first. And that's going to be a lot of, of searching. Some more? I told you you need a second brain, right? <laughs> if you want to switch, that's the time. Reserve of words. That's incompatible. We cannot use the old words, and there's more and more of them that are appearing. Um, Boolean, integer, float, string, null, blue, false are not available anymore for class, constants, interface, traits. I was hit by that. Hmm? I was using string. Yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Ah, I have a very funny one later. We'll see that. Uh, mixed numeric object resources are not used yet. They don't know really what they want to do with that, but it's already reserved, so you cannot use it also. Okay? And in 7.1, void is also reserved, so you cannot as a void. I actually learned that even before they documented it, because I, I checked on master, so in one, in one morning I just upgraded, <coughs> recompiled my PHP, checked my linting, ah! and I got a lot of void. So all of them are, are, are reserved. On the other hand, it's more a feature that you have to know. Um, you have to know, though, that on the other hand, new keywords have been reserved, but keywords have been relaxed inside a class. That's a feature, OK? Because you can still live without that, right? But inside a class, you can have a constant called instance of and use it. That's nice. Instance of is not the best example, but um, in my, my API, I have a lot of usage of as. And as is not, is not a keyword. I mean, it's, it's a keyword from PHP. And inside a class, it can be used as a method, which is nice. I mean, at least it makes my, my, my own API more fluent. That's what I, what I like. But you can end up with, with a really nice sentence like that. Okay, the only exception is class itself. You cannot use class as a constant name because we already have the special syntax where you can get the name of the class by calling this special class constant. That makes it difficult to explain. Okay, otherwise, um, uh, well, properties we don't care already, it's already relaxed. And um, constant and methods, you can use most of the keywords which in terms of static analysis is really painful. Um, this is a feature, but how can you apply this new feature in your code? Unless you are writing it new. <coughs> hmm? Unless you are writing it new. Previously, it never worked. Yeah, it, yeah, it worked. It, works now, so. it doesn't work. But how do you, 
how do you know, how do you search for places in your code where you can use this new relaxed code? <coughs> That's probably new development, OK? Uh, you, it probably means that you have to re rename a number of methods and constants. So don't, don't mess with that, OK? New development, good. The way it is at the moment, no need to, uh, to break a sweat. OK, we had invalid stuff. Even more invalid stuff. That's collateral damage. In PHP 7, we can have this new sequence, OK? Slash u, u for Unicode. And then after that, we have a Unicode code point. I don't know if you're used to that, but this is something that I've heard about. The Unicode code point is basically the sequence here that represents uh, a special character, which means that here in PHP 6, this old sequence doesn't work. It just uh, it's just uh, outputted um, just normally. And in PHP 7, it will actually display an elephant. We're trying to force the Unicode you know, uh, consortium to add the uh, PHP logo on the elephant. I've been, they've been reluctant up to now. Anyway, uh, why is it interesting? Oh, that's, that's a wrong comment. Why is it interesting? You can now have strings that will be compatible with uh, every uh, encoding, and that will still be able to uh, output some uh, Chinese, for example, or, or emoticon or things like that. Why is it collateral damage? This is going to impact your code. How come? Previously, if you are using such a string as a plain text, now they will be like replaced with the code. Yeah. That's the idea, and part of your previous strings may be invalid. What happens is PHP will be very picky in PHP 7, and if the ins internally between the parentheses, well, the curly braces, actually, internal ins between the curly braces, if um, it's not a valid code point, it will be unhappy, and it will parse it. I mean, make a parse error, OK? So the thing is, the part that PHP uses to start understanding the code point is just the two characters. So the two first characters. So this will be exactly this. If in your code you have inside literals, which means double quote strings, this sequence, slash, u, and opening curly, it will try to understand the code point after, and it will yell. Is that often that we have such a structure? It does not apply, it only applies to literals. It do not apply to execution code. So meaning if you read a bunch of garbage code or maybe um, what the, the, this old format, not RFC, RTF. RTF is using a lot of those structure, I think. But if you op F, F open it and use it, PHP is not going to manipulate that. It's only literal. So it's at the partial level that it will try to understand the literal and turn the sequence into something else. How do you check for that? With a lint error. Again, with a linting, it's a parse, it's a parse, uh, parse error. So linting will tell you at once that you have literals that are not compatible. Easy one. OK? Next. How long do we have again? 19 minutes. 20, 19 minutes. <laughs> You're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I have another 50 slides. <laughs> OK, so you tell me if you know it, and then we just switch to the next one. But I have some more. OK, hexadecimal strings also, that's, that may be a problem. Um, PHP 5 used to interpret strings as soon as it could. It would try to interpret strings that looks like hexadecimal characters. So here, you can see PHP 5, it will just say, this is a number, and this is a number inside a string. I will deal the same. OK? On the other hand, PHP 7 will say, oh, this is a string. I'm not going to try to understand what's inside. That's a string. That's a, that's a 0. And I use that as a 0. So if you're used to put your numbers or your MD5 or things like that inside a string, then it's going to be a problem because the comparison is not going to be the same. It's actually coming from security problems. And that's a very classic one <laughs> because 
comparing two different um, MD5 may end up being two different zeros, even if the MD5 has, has a string is different. Okay, so this is this is exactly the security problem that's uh, being solved here. Mm. Again, this is for literals. How do you spot for these problems? Someone who hasn't talked yet. What's the best here to what's the best tool to find those problems? We need literals. Literals are easily adapted, I mean found by static analysis. This one can understand the semantic and understand exactly which string starts actually with this kind of structure or not. Grep is going to be too wide a net. Fair enough? Uh, another warning for strings. Oh no, this one we can skip. This was the previous examples. Exceptions. Exceptions has been a problem, has been a, an evolution also. You, up to now, exceptions has been very flat. We used to have exception as the top level exception in PHP 5, 6. In 7, it's not anymore the case. First, exception itself implements throughable, which is the most general a common denominator for all the ex exceptions. And there are a new exceptions ty type uh, which appears, which is error. Error is for everything linked to parse error. Okay, we can actually, um, you can see parse error, uh, which will be raised anytime you run an eval with code which, which is invalid. But this is why, this is the reason why we have, we can catch parse error inside PHP code, which sounds weird because parse error is actually <coughs> happening before the, the code is run, right? Anyway, so exception now is not at the top, and there is exception itself, runtime exception, logic exceptions. There are, I don't know, 70 of them at the moment, so there's way too many of them for, to fit on a, such a screen. But anytime you have a catch that is trying to catch all the exception by catching slash exception, now you're going to miss a number of them. That's exactly the kind of evolution that has an impact. Your code hasn't changed. The way PHP deals with it has changed. So your code is decaying because the platform has a new way of handling things. Okay? So since exceptions... But we couldn't uh, get it before, right? Oh, before, yeah. It would, yeah, it would just stop. Okay, but now, yeah, we, we, yeah, we couldn't get it before. That's right. Um, so exception is not the top, um, the top, uh, ex uh, the top uh, catch. You have to review all your catch clauses. Anytime you have slash exception by itself, you have to understand and review it to see if it's really the top exception you want. Maybe replace it with throughable. And the problem is especially on the exception handler because the exception handler will be fed by every errors, by every exception that is being raised, including the parse errors. Okay, if you set a type inting on the exception handler of exception, then a part of them will not be filtered, and it will actually be in a very strange place because this is a, a function. The, the the exception handler is is called uh, as a as a you know usual cleaning of PHP itself, and it will suddenly be pre-processing an exception and having another exception raised because it's trying to match the exception as an argument with the throwable throwable inside. So that's really weird, OK? Um, so those are the two different impacts it has on the code. Check all the, your catch. That's probably the e easy one. And the error handler is uh, the second thing you have to check. Everything around exception usually revolve uh, to, uh, around the two of them. And if I have to catch throwable, yeah. and I want to keep my code compatible between PHP 7 and the previous versions, how do I do it? You just <laughs> you have the two of them. You put throwable because in PHP five the it's throwable is in. not yeah. In PHP five throwable is not defined, and you can actually and that's dead code in PHP five. Uh, you can make a catch on an exception that does not exist. Okay, which means that PHP will just compare and say okay it's never the case so I just skip it, and the second one will will be called by the exception. So throughable first, so PHP 7 code will have priority, and you catch it. 
And if it's PHP 5, then throwable will be ignored, not defined. And then it will go to the second one, and then that will, will be caught by, uh, by exception. Yeah, that's weird. If it works. Yeah, this works. But uh, for exception handler, no type inting until you have made the move. That will be the safest for you. Second one, eval. We already mentioned the problem. Well, besides the security problem and performance problems and every other problem we have, eval has now to be uh, may, may re, uh, through exceptions. Anytime you have eval, you have done, you should be putting that into a try uh, try catch close. Okay, so that's PHP five code. That's PHP seven code. Every eval has been upgraded and now is able to par to through parse, uh, parse errors and you try to, f to attempt the, co the, 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 the fix. So anytime, if you're still using eval, which God forbid you, you try to use as little as possible, then at least put the try catch around. That's going to help your code. OK? More evolution in terms of um, exceptions. This one. There are a few fun uh, classes that in case it would fail, so if the constructor fail, actually this new would not raise any parse uh, exception. It will just return null. OK? There is file info, and that uh, there are a few others, which I cannot remember at the moment. There are a few, few classes, few core classes that were behaving like that. Now in PHP 7, all of them will emit a parse error, whatever type you get. OK? So if you have new F info, then you can also put it in a try catch and catch something along the way. OK? So again, your, your old code, or if the old code, if file has been compared to null, that was wrong. You, you have to remove that. Last one, it's a new function, random byte. Random byte, and there is random byte, there is random int. That will provide you cryptographically secure random values. Anytime you have to use random values for security reasons, that may be session uh, IDs, that may be one-time usage um, tokens, things like that. Use random bytes. And there is random int, will provide you a hint. Random byte will just give you a string of garbage that you can use. So that's really nice. But this is cryptography, and you want to keep that safe. The usual behavior of a function that fails in PHP is to return no or zero. Right? That could not happen here. Why? Because then you do not get a string, right? It's not safe. I mean, it means that if for some reason random byte fails, it will return zero, and you start using zero as an identifier for session, that's a recipe for disaster. So we need a special behavior, and especially for secure functions, that will tell you that something is really wrong. Right? And you have to handle the, the behavior. And so we got errors. Type errors. So basically, this single function can, re can return, well, it can through three different exceptions. Type error, that's for you. I mean, we should, uh, probably shouldn't catch it, but type error means you try to do random byte on the letter. Okay? And random byte say, OK, I cannot understand what you're telling me. I, 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 I expect you to push. 10 or number of characters, you're telling me A. I don't know. That's probably a development problem. The second one is invalid length. So you ask for a random byte of minus 10. Again, it makes sense, but not so much. The last one is weird. It's when a random byte couldn't find enough random values. Okay? It's drawing sources from many things, from hard drive, from uh, microseconds in the, in the clock, uh, from, I don't know, lots of different things. That are, but sometimes it just cannot get enough information from the material, physical hardware. And it will decide it's not sufficient to be randomly secure. Okay? And it will just emit an exception saying, cannot get enough random values. This is the one you want to catch, to think, maybe try it again, or mention an error and say, OK, I'm sorry, I cannot stop the session because there is not enough random data for that. The important part here is when it's really important, they will start, this function will start, will emit uh, an exception that you should read catch. 
okay, and then behave accordingly. This is security here. I kind of expect this to be a precedent. I am thinking that the number of other function will evolve and to be more secure, they will start emitting more parse error to, to avoid you, to prevent you from using default behavior or default return value as a null and push that into uh, places where it's not safe. Okay? Random bytes, well, random bytes is a new function, so it's more uh, a new feature. Do I have to stop now? No, eight minutes. Um, oh, catching exceptions. OK, that's a standard one, OK? We have a, this is custom codes doing something, and then there are several, several catches. The, the only thing that's repeated here is that whatever we get to different exceptions, we do the same call, OK? So in PHP 7.1, you can actually have multiple catching exceptions. OK, so the code, the pre, it's not exactly the preceding code, right? Yeah. Anyway. Here, you can stack all the different exceptions you want to process the same way with a, with a um, pipe. So all those three exceptions will be caught by the he, and then you can call the same one, instead of making one class, one uh, catch for, for each of them, okay? which will uh, prevent you from you know, fixing one of them and not the other. PHP 7, 7 one. And what else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's a joke. Whatever. Um, negative offsets. Also, we can start uh, generally. We can start using negative offsets like that. So, if you want to access, you know, when, when you use substring, you can mention that you want the offset of the substring to start from the begin, at the end of the string, and use a negative number. Usually on string itself, we cannot use negative number. We need only to use uh, straight numbers. And on 7.1, you can use both of them. Okay. So here we have a string, a short string. Minus 3 will look for the C. And minus plus 3 will look for the D. No, that should be C also. So 0, 1, 2, 3. No, that's D. That's D. Um, the thing is, this is still not compatible. And I have to bug Davy again. Um, this is not compatible with this one. Okay, we cannot use negative numbers inside uh, inside the, the the string. That will give us a parse error. Actually, those are two num do, do two different tokens. Okay, inside the string when they're doing in in interpolation, this should be one and this should be only one token. Okay, and this is actually two. Okay, numbers any any negative numbers, it's actually two two different value. It's minus and two. And PHP then, at execution, understand them together. So most of negative numbers, and you, you, will, you will be able to use that most of the situation where you want to use. 7.1, another interesting evolution. Lists now accept keys. List accept keys. Though so list, when you want to unpack an array, it used to rely only on numeric integers, 0, 1, 2, 3. And it will assign the first one to the first of the list, the second one to the second of the list, and so on. Okay? Now, it is possible. This is the old way. Okay? Now, we can mention that this, this index A will go in variable A, the index C will go on C, on C, and the index B will go in variable B, meaning that the order on the list is not important anymore. All the three variable uh, lines here are the same. Okay? And everything that is in array, Let's say we have an index D that is not there and not assigned by the list. I just forgotten. OK? If it's required but it's not existing in the array, that will assign no. No error. Don't quote me on this one, but I think so. OK? So that's nice. The other thing also for syntax, list itself has been upgraded for short syntax. So we can now use the short syntax array on the left side, and instead of calling list, just call the, uh, the array itself with or without the, the upgraded version. Okay? So the old version with just ABC between brackets, egal another array, that will work as previously expected. What I like also, that's going to be really crazy, is that you can nest the list now. So imagine here we have an array 
which has in cell in itself another uh, subarrays, then you can build the array, the uh, the list itself in the right order, and get nested value. Extract everything in the same time. I'm probably sure that's crazy. <laughs> at least one level that's good, but I think it's nice. Anyway, um, no, this one is easy. What else? Incompatible. Oh, I like this one. I like this one. Actually, at the moment in PHP 5, you can call any method in a class statically, even if you didn't decide that it was a static class. So here is a, it's an example. Class is defined here. Function f is not static, but I can call it statically. In PHP 5, it's going to tell me the name of the class. Fine. In PHP 7, it will be unhappy and tell me that I cannot call a class that uh, statically that has not been defined statically. OK? That, that is also a source of, uh, how say that? Tears and, and lamentations. How many people? I, I never thought about that. I mean, it took me a long time when I realized that. I didn't realize that, but most of the projects are using that. Anytime people don't know exactly where they have to grab the object to actually call different day referencing before reaching whatever they want, they usually rely on static and <laughs> go directly there. As long as the method is not using this, it's fine. Okay? It should actually be called static because it's not using this. Okay? But as soon as it's using this, the call will make, will, will make it that this is no, and you're probably going to run into lots of trouble behind. Okay? That's a warning, so you have to check with logs, execution time only. Yeah, that's the notice you also get. Uh, oh, yeah, that's in the log. Change behavior. I want to mention this one. Anytime you have complex variable calls, beware. That's going to be difficult for you. Okay? Uh, PHP has changed its inter interpretation. Now it's a lot more consistent. Everything is read from left to right in that order. In PHP 7, it was depending on the situation. Sometimes it would read one, sometimes it would read from right to left. It would be different ways. Basically, the, the rule of thumb is anytime you have at least three of these operators in one call, review it. Well, first review the rest of the architecture. That's probably a good idea also. But if it's too complex, at least three of them, so you see here two, uh, two uh, index and two uh, variables, here, there's also a property. Review it because the behavior may have, may have changed. That will be the realm for, for unit tests, because suddenly it's going to uh, yell and not have the good values. Okay? If you use only small arrays or small calls, that should be fine enough. Um, function get arg. How long do we have again? Yeah, it's, it's 12. I'm going to do this one on the next, and we stop. Uh, function get arg, as well, if you don't use it, it's OK. What changed between BHP 5 and 7 is that function get arg now always return the current values of the argument that have been provided. So look at this function. We get three, three arguments, and we, we print them. Then we change A, and then we, we check again the list of arguments. In PHP 5, that will always be the same. Okay, one, two, three. That's always the same. It doesn't change. Even if we change the argument, function get arg will still be focused on this incoming argument. In PHP seven, this will be the current values that is reported. So depending if you usually there's only one call to function get arg, and that's sufficient. But if you're using that later, not at the beginning of the function, but later, and you expect to have the, the original values. You're going to be in for a surprise. And uh, it's difficult to understand surprise. OK, I'll finish with U sort because this one is interesting. U sort behavior has been changed. Well, not the definition itself, one a specific situation, which is whenever there is execos, values that compare the same, compared with the custom value, 
then PHP, the, the, the previous behavior was to, to reverse the order, while the, in PHP 7, it's actually the same order that is kept. This is undefined behavior. So if you go in there, if you go in bugs, there's a lot of people complaining that the order is not the same between PHP 5 and 7. This is because the value they have at that point are not differentiated. So if user, if the fun comparison function always differentiates the value and makes sure that one is above the other, whatever it is, that will be fine. If two of them are the same, inside those two execos, they will be ordered in a different way. This is not a bug because PHP manual mentioned that it's undefined behavior. What it does is whatever PHP wants, okay? It's not specified, and it should behave, I mean, this way, because the values are the same. They compare the same, so they are the, they're basically the same. But if you rely on that, and I think Pickwick, one of those big projects, relied on that, okay? Whenever it was comparing values the same, and it had the wrong order, it lost something. So this is exactly the kind of things that you have to learn, maybe going to bugs, maybe to le learning that from blogs, because other people will get beaten by that kind of bugs, and it will not be accepted as, as is, as a bug, by the PHP group itself, undefined behavior. But maybe you have to draw uh, experience from other people. Okay, if you're not using U-sort or UK-sort, it's fine with you. So I'm going to let you go for lunch, and just finish as a summary. Oh, too much. So uh, check the manuals, and PHPLint is your first friend. If you're not using it at the moment on a regular basis on your code, for just cleaning purpose, start with that. That's easy. That's very fast to set up. That's going to help you prepare your migration a lot. And that's probably going to help you clean uh, your code, because PHP and newer versions is usually helping you cleaning code of the previous version. So even if you stay in 5.6, that's worth it, OK? Um, the other one is start using static analysis. It goes way further than that, than just you know, searching and gripping the code. And it's going to, br to bring us a lot more uh, goodness in terms of clean code and maintainable code in the coming years. I'll be here for the next uh, day, so if you want to ask me things specifically, or things on the slide that I've not mentioned. Um, I will push that online, give that to uh, Michael, I guess. And I don't know where if you put that. But um, uh, on my Twitter account, I will mention where it's there. Bon appétit. Uh, I have an announcement to make. Oh, OK, sure. Before I end it. Uh, thanks a lot, Damien. It was a pretty interesting session. Um, actually, uh, there are two things, right? The tutorial day and the conference. Uh, how many of you are attending just the tutorial day? OK. So please go to the reception to collect your t-shirt. For others, you can collect at the conference. Yeah, all the sessions are recorded. So go to the one that is interesting to you. So you can switch between the sessions. And uh, anytime you want to take a target break and all, feel free to do so. So you can watch those uh, missing pieces later on. You can proceed for the Thank you.